back again with another update of the car. Um, it's been two months since I finished the engine swap and have had very minimal issues. Um, the only real things I've had are problems just from normal track day stuff. So the uh, engine's been running great, hasn't burned a drop of oil like people say these do. Um, I literally filled it up, never topped it off, not a single drop, and oil level's still full. So it's been a great engine so far, and uh, today's the first oil change. I've done two track days on it um, since swapping it out. So I went to Button Willow, 115 degrees out. Still PB'd by four whole seconds. Uh, so that was a great day. Uh, car did overheat. Did not have the temp gauge set up at the time, so I wasn't exactly sure on the oil or the water temp. Uh, oil temp actually stayed pretty good. I saw it around 260 and I ended up hopping off track, but besides that, it stayed pretty solid for the whole day. Um, so that was a pleasant surprise to me. And yeah, just the coolant temps. I didn't even realize it was overheating until I saw the oil temp pretty hot, and then I looked down on my cooling gauge and it was pinned at the red. So. Got off track immediately, started boiling over the overflow, and that was that. I rebled it and then went back out for a couple more laps, and then I left that day. Um, after that, I brought the car home, did a Pathfinder coolant mod, so now the coolant level well, temp is actually great. Uh, I got a water temp sensor hooked up to the car, so now I can actually read the water temp, and went to Big Willow um, about a week ago, so that actually went great. The uh, Didn't really PB, but didn't really plan on it either because I'm still on the same tires as I was. And the car did great, really. It um, got 0.1 off my PB, another 100 degree day. Oil temp, uh, highest I saw was 245-ish, and the water temp, the highest I saw was about 200 for the whole day, which was actually really impressive. So the Pathfinder coolant mod is working great, um, and the oil temp is staying good, especially now that the coolant temp is gonna stay good. Oil in here does look pretty clean. Like I said, I haven't changed it since I swapped the engine. Haven't even added any, so it's not looking too bad. I have another OEM filter I'm gonna throw in with it, and of course the same 2050 VR1 I've been running, uh, just because it's a thicker oil. It's gonna work a lot better for me with the heat and this thing being a track car. A couple other little setup changes have happened. Um, the day before my last race, actually, I got hit leaving work, which is amazing. So now I'm waiting for insurance to pay me out for that. Um, this car did develop a leak. Unfortunately, I think it's coming from my valve cover gaskets, which are brand new. So I did order new gaskets. I already do have them. I'm going to wait to do them until I swap the intake back to the stock setup. Um, if you know, you know, the car needs to get registered, so I need to swap the intake back. Another little setup change I did, I added uh, professional awesome bump stops in the front and uh, some power tricks helper springs in the front. I do now have a set of swift springs I need to throw in the car, get the power tricks ones out, just because the power tricks ones aren't exactly the measurements I would want. Um, they still work, but they're not perfect. So like I said, I did end up picking up some swift springs for pretty cheap. So those are going to be getting thrown in soon. The uh, bump stops are awesome. And the reason they're only in the front is because the rear of these cars, I didn't even realize you don't need a bump stop really. You, the, the tire can go all the way up into the quarter, not hit a thing. So a bump stop's mainly to keep the actual car from bottoming out on the floor not from the wheel hitting anything in the arches. Today is quite a hot one. Camera just overheated while trying to film. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this engine up and then I'm going to uh, switch over to a different spot to finish this video up. Southern California has been killing us recently with this heat. Let's see here. Uh, oil is already 110, all it was doing is sitting.
and take a look at the brake pads and the rotors. As you can see, the rotors do have quite a bit of little micro cracks in them. Uh, I just want to inspect the inside, make sure they're not cracking too, too bad. Um, that way I know if I could reuse these or not again. But they are getting pretty beat up. Uh, right now the car does not have any brake cooling ran because these pads have a high operating temperature. My fluid is good, so the fluid I know won't boil. And then the rotors actually have a directional cooling vein, so they will cool a little better. Uh, also being two-piece, so I haven't really worried about brake ducting at this point, but I do have brake ducting materials for when I do want to. Also, just have to get the pads in there, maybe swap around so that they wear even. Those have about three track days on them, I think, and uh, they've been doing alright, so we're just going to go ahead and try and get the best life out of them as I can. Alright, so to my surprise, the rotors actually look really good. So you can see, obviously, there is the smaller cracks in this outer lip. I expected there to be some in here though, and it does not seem like there is actually. It doesn't really look like there's any. Um, all the slots are still there. They still look pretty good. So it does, for some reason, seem like this inside isn't really uh, variating heat as much. So it seems like this is holding more heat than the outside, uh, because what happens when the brakes will cool off too fast, these will get super hot and they cool down really fast, and that just uh, expands and contracts the metal. That's what causes them to crack. So, I actually am happy to see that they seem to be cooling well on the inside. Uh, I will need to hook up some rotor paint to them and see what the actual temps are at. And run the brake cooling someday, but not really a worry as of right now. Uh, luckily, since my car is not an active bono car, the front the rotors are stronger from Z1 because there, there is problems with the 371 is breaking off the whole ring from here. But these are seem to be great. And, uh, might check the torque of these, but they should be good. And we're just throwing back together. But, like I said, pleased to see that this side is actually good. And the pads as well. The pads are pretty good as well. Really thought they'd be more worn, but they're actually holding up pretty good for what they are. Um, really liking these Hawks. They're DC 80s. They're super aggressive. And uh, I do really like them. Wheel bearings also are new as of like a couple months ago, and they also look great. No cracks, no play, no noise. So everything up front so far is looking great. All right, so as for the brake cooling, I was actually given this setup uh, from another track guy that sold this. So it obviously comes with a brake tubing. And then these are custom mounts uh, that mount to the back of the caliper and force air into it. These are where the hoses actually hook up. When I had to mock them up for the first time, it doesn't really look as good as I had planned it as being, so there's our hose in here. It will get air. Obviously that can be routed up however, but down here, um, it will force air into the rotor, but the problem with this setup is you don't want air uh, going at the face. It'll just cool the face of the rotor. You want it to go into the vein so it cools both sides, because uh, right now this will only cool off this inner side. And actually looking at the pads, it seems that this inside pad is wearing a little faster than this one, uh, which could be heat related. So again, I do need to get a rotor paint and see which side is getting hotter. I'm assuming this inside is getting hotter and staying hotter. That's why it's wearing differently. And also why the pads are a little differently worn, but interesting to see how this is ran and set up. Now I know what I can do with it and uh, if it'll even really work out the way I expect it to. While we're inspecting the rotor, I figured might as well inspect the pads as well. Uh, Good wear, actually. I was having a problem with the other pods I was running, which were Tower Space Garage, where they actually chunk off, like a chunk would go missing. Uh, but the Hawks actually seem to be doing it really well. I mean, these are great. They stop really hard, and they have a really good heat tolerance as well. Uh, it is interesting. The inside, like I was saying, is wearing faster than the outside pad. So I would get look into brake cooling, but so far they're holding up really great. Uh, obviously, all the paint has fallen off, and it seems like the vacuum plates have bent slightly, but. What can you do? I mean, the Brembo's are really strong in this car. I've done this before. They just generate a ton of heat because it's a heavy car with a relatively small pad for, for the like actual clamping force of this, the caliper. And uh, it's just what you end up with. But glad to see everything's still working the way it should be. I think this caliper's actually doing better than the other side. Yeah, I mean, the seals inside, the little dust boots are starting to crack just because I hope they get they burn. Um, but I'm going to have a rebuild in the calipers with different pistons anyways, so I'm not really too worried about that at this moment. I'm just going to kind of note it, throw these pads back in, grease them, and be good to go. Figure while I'm at it, check the rears as well. Here's our rear rotors. These are StopTech. 
uh, single piece rotors. I've had these ever since I did the Brembo swap, so two years pretty much on these rotors, and uh, they're holding well, up great. No cracks. There's quite a bit of a lip on them. They're definitely wearing out. I'm probably going to end up getting the Z1 two piece rear rotors soon, but I just want to make sure they weren't cracked or anything, and they look fine, so that's obviously a good thing. And then, um, something wild. This car has had DTC 70s on it for every track. That every track that I've been to nearly, and they are fine. There's like no wear on them, which is ridiculous. Um, the rear pads just don't really wear like that, but uh, our bearings are good on the rear as well. They're 370 bearings, so not really worried about those. And everything else back here seems to be in pretty good shape. So I'm just gonna throw the rotor back on, throw the brakes back on, and get her going again. I figured instead of just talking in front of my car like I normally do to outro these videos, I would just overlay some footage and uh, basically talk over that and kind of explain what else is going on. One thing I did forget to mention about the Z is at my last Trek day at Big Willow, uh, there's the front straight there and my car can reach about 125 down the front straight and the problem with that is I realized at about 120 miles an hour in fifth, the shifter will shake really bad and basically pop the trans out of fifth gear, but not really because the trans can't hold it in, uh, mainly just because the vibration just knocks the shifter loose in the detent and just pops it out. It's not a shift like holding or accelerating in fifth, it will not pop out. It's only once you let off the gas, it'll pop out. So I do need to look into that, but I asked around and people were saying that it could be because I have solid engine mounts and diff mounts, but still a poly trans mount. That's the last thing to kind of give any sort of vibration. So maybe that's causing the shake. Um, also sort of leaning towards a drive shaft being unbalanced or worn because the ISR exhaust I have, every time the car slams on the ground, the drive shaft gets hit by the muffler, which is not a good thing. And especially being a carbon fiber drive shaft, it is kind of sketchy. Um, especially also being on the federal tires, they're a lot lower than all the other tires I ran, or at least for the size. So the car is far lower. Like the car is a few inches off the ground, if that, it's super low. Uh, I recently found out I've been scraping on the floor on my side skirt while cornering, um, and they're stock skirts, stock body. The car's just that low. So definitely something to note, definitely something to look into. But overall, like I said, great track day. Uh, had a lot of fun. Really the only thing I wanted to do was test out the new camera mount, which you'll be seeing in action right now and from now on. I can finally use my DSLR, get good footage, get good audio when I find out a good place to actually mount the microphone. And I also just want to test the Pathfinder coolant mod. And like I said, did work great. Uh, the coolant stayed pretty cool the whole day for a 100 day. 100 degree day, 200 degree coolant temps are nothing for a car like this, especially being ripped as hard as it constantly does. Um, the car's been phenomenal. New engine's been great. No issues with the car, besides just the little nuanced things. But these are sort of normal track car things that you kind of interact with. Um, obviously, a car getting beat on is going to have issues, but the fact that it's not having certain issues is it just proves that it is a good car. If you guys have made it this far, try and say in the comments what you guys want to see. Usually I'll be filming a video and I'll just skip up halfway through because I have no real direction with it, no real motivation to make the video. Especially now that the 350Z is obviously a well-documented platform. Um, when I was making videos with the Maxima way long ago, I was the only one doing things to that car, so it was really easy to make a video and actually be helpful. And it was easy to find direction to take the video because no one else has done it. Similar to the BMW, so I actually find it's more fun to work on the BMW for video than it is for the Z because people aren't doing what I'm doing with my BMW to theirs typically. Um, it's just a different build, different look on the build, different parts going into the car, different uh, design choices, I would say. But um, yeah, if you guys like track footage, which I highly doubt, I get no views on any of my track videos. Let me know if you guys want to see more BMW stuff, which I know is the case. A lot of people are coming to the BMW stuff. They probably do not care about the 350Z stuff. Uh, more stuff's going to be coming, of course, as stuff goes on. And as for the Z, let me know if you guys want to see me actually working on it, making changes, or just doing updates like I'm doing right now, and just seeing where things go. It would just be helpful to kind of get a direction where I should take things.
Got that.